Yeah, I thought I was gonna need that. Oh, <laughs> that sounded like something broke. <laughs> Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Welcome back to another video. As you can see, we're back down in the shop. We got Noah's third gen, so we're gonna be kind of knocking out two things at one time. But to focus more on the second gen first and the second gen build, last video you saw that we got the um, the third track bar and then the fourth gen linkage. So we're still gonna stay within the suspension of the truck. And today we are working on installing shocks. And so that's all four corners of the shocks. So if you come here, and look at what we have set up right now. So taking a look at this, we'll go over there and look at the shocks that we, uh, that I ordered. And so you can kind of see, here's our front ones right here. And then here are our rear shocks. And then to get a part number on these, you can kind of zoom in right here. I can read it off the, uh, the invoice. So right here, if you move the strap, there's a part number 24185776. And what's unique about these is how unique the setup is on the truck right now. So the factory tire delete deletes about five inches off the uh, the full length of the shock. Um, so what I did was just go ahead and stick a tape measure down through the center of the spring to where the, uh, the mounting point is and then look at where we're sitting at just normal ride height. And so looking at it, we have about four inches of lift, but we deleted five inches of shock tire. So that kind of equals out to a negative one lift. Um, and so this part number specific for Bilstein is designed to run on Dodge trucks with a plus one to negative one um, lift ratio or a lift span. And so that's gonna be where we're running it at. Uh, right now the ride height is about 20 inches. So I have five inches because extended length all the way up is 25 and then all the way down to where it compresses is gonna be 14. So right in the middle of that, I got to travel, equal travel both ways on the, uh, on the shock. So that kind of goes over how the suspension setup on the front end uh, is with the lift coils and then also with the delete plate. And then the rear, it's kind of the same situation. We couldn't go back with a factory length shock um, because back here we have full progressive leaf springs that are Carly. Um, and so this is actually about two inches of lift to two and a half inches of lift. Um, so if you go and look at the the part number that we have for the Bilstein 5100s. Uh, this is designed to uh, fit a truck that is lifted two inches in the rear. So there's a little bit of, uh, you know, kind of looking at part numbers and, and looking at uh, just the, the full uh, extended length of the shock and compressed length and kind of find that middle range of, you know, how much the travel or how much travel you're gonna have in your suspension. So that kind of goes over it. Uh, we also have, uh, you know, all new garments and hardware for the, uh, the front shocks. We got a, a nice sticker and then we have all new hardware, um, you know, for the rear and then also the front. So we have enough hardware to pick and choose what we want and what's going to be easiest to install. Then as a nice surprise, we did get more help today. And that's Lucas. What are you doing so, in there? He's hiding out. He's researching third gen videos. All right. So we got our front shot and then we just, we'll just decompress it. And then easiest thing to do is we're just going to remove the shock tower plate or delete plate and go ahead and drop the shock straight down in there. These are actually pretty nice, by the way, about 90 bucks off King Speed. 
All right, and then this will just drop straight down. And if the truck was together, you'd have to, you know, kind of remove the battery box and, and go all through those steps. But as of right now, it's pretty easy. And then you can see the, the bracket that'll sit down there. And then we'll just drop it straight down. And we're gonna run a bolt through the bottom. Just get that set through here. You can kind of see the shock. And then we'll tighten everything up and compress it. And then we'll have a fully uh, cycling shock and, and go from there. But as of right now, that's all we're gonna do for, on both sides. And uh, then we'll get everything set on the bottom and then we'll work on the top. All right, so you can see the bushing of the shock right there. We gotta get it to sit right down here. If you can see where my finger's at. So we gotta press it through there. And then this bolt will just go straight through. And then Noah on the back side, he has the nut washer and lock washer. Um, and then that'll kind of get the bottom set. We need to do that for both the front shocks. But right now that bushing's fitting a little tight in the bracket on the axle. So we'll go ahead and work that down through there. When in doubt, grind it out. Yes. All right, so the width of the bushing right here is just a tad bit too much. So we're gonna take a flap disc and just kind of take off the uh, mill scale or just get this to be shiny on both sides. That should be enough to uh, less drop the shock in. All right, let's roll with that. Yeah, maybe we can get that but ah oh, you went too far <laughs> all right Hold it back up pull it push it back down again all right i got a screwdriver through there you can let go all right that took we should a little the screwdriver in through the other side the way, way we can push the bolt through oh well it'll be okay i don't even know if you can though. um that was a little more work it's a little bit tighter fitting than i thought um but otherwise it's just a little bit of um material removal and now we got it set um we'll get the hardware the bolt run it through there and then we'll get this one uh as of right now just snugged up um and then we'll work on the other side then we'll tighten everything um and then uh we'll go from there all right i'm locked in yeah one more All right, and just like that, everything is kind of tightened down. Um, it was a little bit tricky. I don't know if you can see under here. It's kind of hard, but it's not really focusing. But if you look at right there, that's where we had to uh, tighten everything up at. But that's the bottom one knocked out. So coming up to the top, this will be much easier. This is just compressing it, but we do have to... Uh, have the orientation of the bushings correct. So all this is gonna be is your flat side right here goes into the cup. This nipple right here goes into your shock tire delete plate. And then it's just the opposite for the top. So this will go down into it. You can see the, the nipple right there. It'll go down into it. This will sit on top like this, cupped over. And then you will run your m14 nut tighten it down this is a lock locking nut and then i bought some extra washers so we can kind of distribute the clamping force of it on the shock tire delete plate but that kind of covers how everything is bolted together for the top side and uh do a quick little video of getting everything put together and we'll knock out the other side all right so just like this we'll slide that on get that to sit down and I'll press over the shock stud. A little bit more difficult than I thought. All right. There we go. And then we'll go ahead and Lucas, you want to tighten this down. So, all right. And then they'll sit in there just like that. And then we'll compress the shock. All right. 
and get everything kind of centered up. And go ahead and knock these out. We may run into a problem. This is a very, very tight fitment right here because of the King Speed delete plate is, you know, about a half inch, uh, three eighths inch thick. And the shock tower itself is only about an eighth inch thick. So we're having to gain, or we're gaining that uh, distance in between, you know, the strut um, or the stud on the strut right here. So we're having to really work with this tiny bit of uh, threads left, but we're tightening it down and it looks like right there is gonna be good. We have just enough of the nylon locking uh, portion of the nut to set on the threads but you can kind of see now the bushings are compressed right here same thing on the bottom and we're just going to tighten down this but that's the reason why you're starting to see everything um, you know doesn't have a lot of leeway in terms of how much threads are left or how uh, tight the bushing is starting to compress but that's okay we'll get these uh, tightened down and that will complete this side uh, honestly not too bad. With it being custom and every kind of part uh, is a little bit different than the factory. So going back is a, you know, a challenge, but not too bad. So happy with this one. We'll get this tightened down and we'll start working on that one. Alright, so as you can see now, we got everything installed. We do a little zoom in on the shock itself, but everything looks really good. So it went together nice. We got the bushings clamped down. We got the washers on the top, washers on the bottom. We got the bolt ran through the bottom to secure everything on the axle. It looks clean. So honestly, it's going to ride just as it should. Be better than factory. Paired nice with the Thurn Springs and clean look. You know, when you pop the hood, you won't see, uh, you know, the shock tower. So we're going for that clean look underneath the hood as well in the engine bay. But that kind of rounds out the front end of the, uh, the, the install for the shocks. This is a little more uh, difficult. The rear end, if we go look back here. Since there's not a bed on it, this is gonna be pretty darn easy. Just to bolt through there, bolt through down here, and then kind of the same way going on the other side of the axle. We well, should be able to knock that out pretty quick. Here's the uh, the rear shocks. Or maybe a little bit stiff from the front one, but so we'll get these knocked out, put in there. Same thing, same hardware. We're gonna go ahead and use to get everything good to go. It's a little bit different compared to if someone had a uh, you know a truck that was put together like one out there. Um, but yeah, we should be able to knock this out real quick and go from there. All right. Can you hold it? All right. Three, two, one, pull apart. All right. I go. Very, very tight fit. Okay. Let me go ahead. Yeah. Well, it's just some tight enough to where the threads are uh, engaging on the powder coat. I can actually tighten it pretty tight. There it goes. Now it's stripped out. All right, we're good, Lucas. All right, one out of two done. 
Let's hop over to the driver's side. Get the bottom side tightened, and that will be the end of this video. We'll close it out, do a little quick little uh, review, but let's get this bottom knocked out. All right, so as you can see, we got everything bolted on. This is much easier, the rear end, the rear shocks. Um, just kind of doing a quick overview. Here's your shock mount right here. Then you have one on the axle down there. Make sure the inner part of the shock that does all the adjusting is up on the frame of the truck. Same thing over here. Um, but this is really simple. Brand new hardware makes it simple, makes it easy putting everything together. Everything's tight on the backside. So that will kind of close out the rest of this video. Um, come walking back up to the front of the truck. Um, this took up most of the time, just getting the fitment to line up down here in the, uh, the bracketry and the axle. Um, and then just getting everything up top uh, with the king speed with the different uh, thickness of the plate compared to the stock uh, shock tower thickness. Um, but overall, they look really good. Went with the Bilstein 5100s. Um, you know, they're a good overall shock. They're not meant for anything too off-road, but as far as on-road performance and getting all those little uh, herky-jerky movements that you get and, you know, some factory shocks, it'll take all that out. Um, paired with the Thurn suspension and also with Thurn steering, this is going to be confirmed unit and the best steering second gen that you know i'll ever drive that you know most people will ever see yeah this will close out this video appreciate you following along uh, if you have any questions be sure to leave a comment also uh be sure to like the video subscribe share this way you talk diesel really helps the algorithm really getting some some traction on the channel if you're in any of the facebook forums uh, i post there as far as the updates go um kind of a little bit of overview of what you're seeing in the video right now so be sure to uh, check that out and uh, we will catch you in the next one and foss out Thank you.